right where you are and tell the Lord that you need because you're lost with him. the Lord. We want to pick up on our series, the, the Abundant Life series that we have been teaching. And we want to go a little bit further today, praise yeah. God, especially when we talk about when does the harvest time come. Uh, and so we want to take a look at that. But let's open up here in the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 22. Again, Genesis, chapter 8, and at verse 22. It reads on this wise, it said, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So notice here, is there still an earth? Yes. So therefore, there's still an earth. He said that the seed time and the harvest time will not cease. Praise right. God. It's perpetuous continuously. So this concept of seed time and harvest time is for eternity. Yeah. It's all through all generations, as, lo as long as the earth remains, this will not stop seeding and harvesting right now. We thank God for that. Let's go into this lesson. Now, let's look at when cometh forth the harvest. Uh, remember, the harvest is what God gives to us, yes. and the seed is what we have for God. Now, just as Bishop just read in Genesis 8 and 22, there's always going to be a seed time and a harvest, meaning that there should always be giving and receiving. Yes. It, it, you know, you can't just give one time and say, you know what? I've given. I'm done giving. That's it. No, yeah. it has to be a continuous process if you're going to increase and multiply. Now, let's go over to Mark, the fourth chapter, verse number 26. I will read it to you out of the King James Version. Mark 4 and verse 26. We've learned quite a bit about uh, sowing seeds. And we know that the seed is the word of God that needs to go into the depth of our heart and grow. Yes. Now look at verse 26. It said, and he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. So yes. what is a harvest? A harvest is the process or period of gathering time. It's the it's the seed ripe. Yes. In other words, the harvest is the time that you receive what it is that you have sought the Lord for. Whatever it is that you ask God for. I want you to know that you're not just seamlessly sowing seeds with no return. The yes. harvest is what God wants to bless you with and bring to you. We need to recognize that God is a God that is willing and ready uh, to bless you. But there is a process. So if you have the harvest, which is the season when your crop is ripe, then there's the sickle. And, you know, I looked up the sickle, and, Bishop, it looks yeah. like a, a, a tool with a hook on it. And it's what they would use once the blade comes up. That's when it, you know, you ever seen that plant the ground? And then that little blade just sort of shoots through the ground and it comes up and then it begins to grow and grow yeah, and yeah. produce fruit. Now, 
something I found about when you're going to know that your harvest is coming up. Um, to receive a harvest, it requires faith. Now, we got to remember that because in Romans 10 and 17, it says, so faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You got to keep that seed watered with yes. the word of God. Absolutely. And if you don't keep that seed watered with the word of God, you may move into doubt or drought, if I can put it like That's that. Good, good. So doubt or drought? a doubt, Come if on. you doubt, you're going to move into a drought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once the seed takes root uh, in your heart, now what happens is the Holy Spirit can begin to move and search out the avenues of God to bring the promise to you that you've been seeking him for with your seed. And that's when God can bring different people into your life. He can open up doors of opportunities uh, for you to receive what it is you're asking God for. I don't want to put anything in that place because I want you to do that. You know what you're sowing for. Maybe maybe it is a ministry. Maybe it's a, a home. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a car. Maybe it's a, 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 a new relationship. Uh, it could be many things. But you have to understand that when we sow, it says, you don't, you don't know how this harvest is going to come up. No. Only God knows. Now, I want to take us to this beautiful scripture I found in um, the book of Ecclesiastes. If you'll go with me to Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, and I'm going to get it in both because I, I love to go to different translations because it helps give us a better understanding. Remember, there's always going to be seed time and harvest time. But what you need to understand is it requires faith for a harvest. Yeah. You have a part to do, which is that Come sowing, yeah. and then God has his part. Now, listen. Your job is to do your part and not worry about God's part because God know how to take care of his part. Would you say then that faith without works is dead? Absolutely. So you, you believe in, but you're using your faith. You yes. got some work to do with exactly. it. Exactly. And after that work is done, then faith is completed. Then God wants to take over after that. Beautiful. Because God, you cannot do this without God. For without him, we can do nothing. This is what Jesus said in, in the book of uh, St. John chapter 15. So it's necessary for God. Yes. He, he he said he said that that we are the branch. He's the vine, and we are the branches. And so therefore, we want to grow from that point. But let's look. I call it hot sauce. Looking at other translations, right, right. To flavor it up. <laughs> praise God, so we can get a better understanding. Because understanding is necessary. Yes. And something the Bible said in and again in Proverbs chapter four: With all thy getting, get an understanding. Yes. There's a necessity and a benefit. Because once you understand it, then you can translate it to other people. Once you don't understand something, you may be able to do it right. and get it abundant, but you cannot share it with nobody else. God doesn't want you to have it by yourself. God wants you to get enough understanding so it can be given to others yes. so they can duplicate it, and it goes on, and the process can continue. It should not die with you. God wants it to be shared with others so it can grow. Because, again, as long as the earth remains, there is Time and harvest. Let's go on a little bit further with that harvest now. Amen. So now, faith without works is dead. So, you you know, to reap a harvest, you must uh, use your faith. Now, faith without works is dead means you have to do something. And if you are doing things that God is not telling you to do or pleased with you doing, you're doing a lot of dead works. One thing about getting that harvest, we need to walk in obedience to what the Lord is saying. But I, I want to show us something because remember out of Mark 4 where it says the farmer, whether he's asleep or awake, his seed is growing. And it said he doesn't know how. Now look at Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, and go with me to verse 5. It's so good. It said, as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Now, this is good. Beautiful. It's Beautiful. saying, listen, 
We don't even know when a woman is pregnant with a child, we cannot figure out how that baby is growing inside of that womb, the bones and, and, and the eyes and everything. Because guess what? The man and the woman came together with seed. Amen. But it is God that grows that life. And it's saying just like you plant your spiritual seed into the kingdom of God, into the bed of your heart, it says you don't know how this operates. Because guess what? This verse is telling us you can't know the activities of God. So your job is to be in faith and to believe. And it is God's job to bring forth the promise. Let me read that again in uh, the living translation because it's just so beautiful. Because, see, some of us sow and then we try to make the harvest come forth. And when we need to just really follow the um, instruction of yes. the Spirit of God that's actually getting us to the harvest. Now, look what it says. Again, Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 5. It said, just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of the tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. I need you to say right now that wow. God is on my side and God is doing great things for me because I am trusting in his word. So one way that the harvest will come forth, it requires faith. And it requires you to have action. Now, another way that it comes forth is that the seed, um, as it's growing, you gotta, you got to. Uh, I like to tell people, uh, put a put a little praise on it. Praise. Put a More put a little praise. put a little worship <laughs> on it. Yes. You know, don't yes. just give and then uh, just just forget about it and just. Just say, oh, you know what? I sold that hundred dollars, and uh, a thousand better come back. No, yes. that's that's no. not how we do it. No. This is not the lottery. No. This is this is God's kingdom. He has a, a a process, and we need to follow it. Be careful of trying uh, to play the lottery with God. You yes, know, you know that people are gonna the teaching that we're giving them. The understanding they're getting. Some of them will still try to play it like it's a lucky charm. They're going to hit the slot machine yeah. and hit the numbers big. Right. That is not in having an honest heart, honest before God. Right. God is not a gamble. Right. God is a sure thing. His right. word is sure. We want, we want something that's positive, right. not chance, something chance. We're not for chance. Right. God's word is exact. It's effective. It's powerful. Amen. And it's going to do what he says. God says, I'm not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man. That uh, should I repent? Have I spoken? And shall I make it not good? Right. God said, "The seed that you sow, that, that I'm going to help you with. I'm going to make it good for you. Right. I'm watching over your seed. Matter of fact, I'm I'm hurrying to have it completed because I want to be a part of it. See, without God, we can't do nothing. See, Amen. This is not something just on our own recognizance and how we're good at something, yeah. how we know how to do something. No, we have to involve God. But with God, all things yeah. are possible. And so God is not a gamble. Uh, God is faithful. God is true. So for all of you gamblers out there, you know what? Lay down your gambling button and, 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 and trust God. Trust God to bring forth his promises because God knows exactly um, how he wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing uh, to others. Now, with that being said, Let's go over to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, and go with me to verse number 6. Remember I said that you need not worry about how your harvest is going to grow in the sense that you can force or make it grow. What you have to do is have faith and believe that God, through his word, through the promises of his word, is going to bring forth uh, what needs to be done. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. It says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. See, God is the multiplier. Yes. God is the one that's going to bring the increase. 
Now look at verse 7, which is very interesting. It says, so then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. So in other words, don't you get too caught up in, you know, just you doing your part. You right. got to believe that the one that's going to fulfill uh, my promise is God. It said he's the one that's going to do it. And look at eight. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. In other words, they, they, they're they working together. Yeah. They have a job. But listen what he says. And every man shall receive his reward according to his own labor. So you do have something to do. Don't just sit around and fiddle your thumbs after you've sown your seed. But like I said, uh, keep watering it with the word of the Lord. Keep uh, building your faith. Keep trusting God. Because the Bible talks about, in Proverbs 10, it talks about he that gathereth in the summertime is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. That's Proverbs 10, 5. You got to be careful that when you should be out there uh, with the sickle reaping your harvest, that you somewhere relaxing. See, we can't take down from continuously um, seeking God's word, reading his word, praying, uh, meditating, confessing, and fast, and I know you say you all talk about that all the time, but it's helping keep the ground of my heart um, fertilized. Yeah. It's helping keep the ground of my heart pliable. Uh, many of us have hardened ground yes. that, and you know, the Bible talks about a fallow ground needing to be broke up because the seed can't go deep in and take root and come up because you got so many uh, things inside of your heart. Don't let your seed get corrupted by your past. Now, remember, um, the seed is not automatic. So once you put it in, you know, some people think it's automatic. Um, I, I can't emphasize enough that you have to continue to do your part. And part of your part is following the instructions that the Holy Ghost will give you. He may lead you. Uh, to someone or someone to you or he may tell you to do something or like Bishop talked about you may have to put a seed or uh, sow another seed on top of a seed he may bless you with something and say uh uh that's not for you that's for you to now give to somebody else because what he has for you is greater and bigger than than what you had previously sown um, so wouldn't you say that you cannot be greedy Gotta right. know what is your harvest and know what you need to sow again. Yes. Because it may require you to sow again, yes. as we just expressed earlier. Beautiful. To give what you want, it needs, uh, I, I heard him talk about double sowing. <laughs> Twice the amount of what All you right. would. See, sometimes when we, when the Bible talks about sowing, he said, God will give you. He said, no, you can't take that. Sow it again so that now it can double because what you want is up here. On level 10, right. and you're trying to sow at level 5. No, you got to sow again at 5 to, or to reach the point of 10. Yeah. The Spirit knows. We're led by the Spirit. We cannot be greedy by the Spirit. We, yeah. can't, we can't let the time, the time test destroy us. Right. Because time or delay or disappointments to bring out discouragement. Don't be discouraged. Refuse to be discouraged. Because God is on the case. God yes. is with you. He's going to multiply the seed that you sow. So stay in faith. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now let's go over to Proverbs, the sixth chapter, and go to verse number six. Remember, I talked about the seed is not automatic. Um, you must work. Look what Proverbs 6 and verse 6 says. It said, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, uh, provided her meat in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. So it said, here we see a way that the harvest comes forth is because the ant is saying, listen, I don't have to have somebody 
constantly telling me, you need to pray, you need to read, you need to, you need to, you need to give, you need to do this. It says, no, the ant is, is busy doing Already. everything yeah. that's yeah. necessary. See, a lot of us want the blessings of God, but we don't want to do our part. Remember I said that the harvest is not automatic. Remember, you have to do your part, and God is going to do his part. And it yes. said, listen, we can take some advice just from ants. They're busy working. But look at what it says in verse number 8. She provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. In other words, she wasn't laying around. Some of you want to move out in wonderful ministries, but you don't even study your word. Yeah. You don't even pray, but you want to want to go uh, to other uh, countries. Uh, you may even just want to go on your job and begin a, a, a ministry, but you hadn't put forth any work to do it. Let me tell you something. You can do it. You can go to the nations. You can be, uh, begin to build a Bible study or a prayer group, even on your jobs, and be a blessing to other people. You got to sow to your spirit. You got to believe God. I don't know, Bishop, but um, I remember we went to one conference, and, man, we left pumped up, and we came back. We said, listen, God wants to do some big, big things for you. Yes. And, and <laughs> we just kept thinking, you know what, some of us, we don't realize how much God really wants to bless us. But I'm not going to labor on that any longer. But I, I want us to look at something else in Proverbs that I saw about when does the harvest come. So the harvest comes um, when you work hard. Now, notice this is not sweating because it's not that kind of uh, uh, working hard. Yeah, it's, it's not, not toiling. toiling. Very not good, toiling. Bishop. It's toiling. working hard. It's doing yeah. your part. But it's not yeah. you working like, oh, my God, this is so hard. No, we have sweatless victory in Jesus Christ Praise when we God. obey and follow his instruction. Yeah. Now, go over to Proverbs 26 and go to verse number 1. Now, I like this verse. It says, as snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. So how many people wants to see some snow in summer? <laughs> Absolutely not. And then it said, you don't even want to see rain in the harvest time because you're out there gathering in the crops. Yes. And it says, so honor is is not seemly for a fool. In other words, a fool is not going to be honored. Nope. And listen, don't allow the enemy to bring rain to your harvest. Now, this is, this is the time. We want rain when it's growing, when it's planting and it's growing. But now the harvest is ripe. We don't want it to be rainy. We want the sun to be shining so we can gather in all that God wants to give us. And, you know, I thought about it. Rain could sometimes be you doubting or you not trusting God, you not believing what he said. Maybe somebody said something to you and it discouraged you or it caused your faith to become weak. I want to encourage you uh, today to recognize that God wants to bless you abundantly. And he's not just blessing you just for yourself. That would be selfish. But well, what he's doing is he's blessing you so that you can bless others and yes. make an impact in the lives of others and give him the glory for it. Give God the glory and the honor that he so do. You know that the book of Judges uh -huh. talked about Gideon, chapter 6, about the Midianites. Right. Midianites, what they would do would let you have a harvest, pack your harvest, right. and take your and stuff take it away. so you couldn't enjoy it. Well, for the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy, third chapter 6, God has given us all things for us to enjoy. Praise Verse God. 17. So the Midianites, one of the enemy's attack, he wants, once you get that harvest, he want to take your enjoyment, he want to take your harvest so that you won't be able to enjoy it. But that is satanic. The devil is a lie. God wants you to enjoy your harvest. Don't worry about your harvest. God is protecting that, praise God. Yes. But you got to protect it because people want to come in and contaminate it with all kinds of issues, all mm -hmm. kinds of things. 
to steal the joy and the enjoyment that you ought to have, praise God, yes. because your harvest is coming. It's time to rejoice. I remember a sister years back yes. when we were in church, and we were at a revival meeting, and uh, she came up and gave her testimony. She said, I just love sowing today. She said, every time I sow, God would multiply my seed yes. sowing. Yes. I mean, she would even give other people to sow. And she would just, God just kept multiplying her seed. And this was a tremendous work because right. she was, as soon as she sowed, she reaped. As soon as she sowed, she reaped. And God's hand was in that, that reaping and so on. We call that miracle grow. Praise yeah. God. We talked about the earlier that miracle grow. Uh, that sister also stated to, she testified yes. that as she would give, she would feel the anointing yes. and the presence of God come on her. And she was a beautiful giver, but she recognized something that as long as she shared how that God would bless her. And that brings up my next point of when does the harvest come forth? It comes forth when you share your harvest. Let's go over to Deuteronomy 24 and verse number 19. Now, we know in, in while you're going to Deuteronomy 24 and 19, we're very familiar with Genesis 12 and 2 where he said, I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. That should be all of us wanting and desiring to be a blessing. But look here in Deuteronomy 24, verse 19. It says, When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheep in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hands. So he says, listen, this is awesome. When will your harvest come? When God knows that you have a heart to share. Yes. When God realizes that he, he can see in your heart that I'm not just getting all for me. You know, some people get just for themselves. You know, they, they just hoard everything in for themselves. Yes. But when God sees that you uh, have a giving heart and that you want to be a blessing to others, listen what he says. When that person was in the field, cutting down the harvest. He left some of his, his harvest there. Um, the Lord, you know, they said, don't go back and get it. Yes. Help the fatherless. Help that, that mother, that, that single mom. Help the widow. Help that woman that has lost her, her spouse and, and needs help. It said the fatherless. It said the stranger. You know, sometimes you may run up on some strangers. We see them all the time. But, but let God lead you. You know, and, and, and help them out. And he's saying, listen, you are to be a blessing to other people. Can we get a mentality now that we'll share? You know, some of us have been taken, I just feel this so strongly, some of us have been taken advantage of so badly that now we have shut down our bowels of mercy wow. and yes. we don't want to give to anyone. But I want to tell you that you are a giver. And, and forgive those that took advantage of you and misused your love, your kindness, and your sharing. And allow God to uh, heal your heart so that you continue, so that you can continue to be a blessing to others. Now, I want to go over to one other point that I think is so important tonight of how the harvest comes. Uh, I want you to recognize, and it's actually going back to something that Bishop had touched on. Um, recognize that God owns everything. God owns everything. We are just stewards. And God blesses what he possesses. And when we start recognizing that he's the owner and he controls everything, we'll stop doing stuff without asking God, what we should do. We'll, we'll come out of dead works. Yes. You know, some of us have spent a lot of time doing some dead works, and we found at the end of it there was no fruit. And maybe the reason was is that God never told you to do it in the first place. Yes. So go with me before we go over to 2 Corinthians, because we're winding down. Go to 1 Chronicles, the 29th chapter, 1 Chronicles 29. And verse 12, we, we're just about wrapping up. 
It says in First Chronicles 29 and 12, remember the harvest comes when you recognize that God owns everything. Everything that you have belongs to God and we're stewards over it. It said, thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. Thou art exalted as head above all. You need to recognize that everything you have, God has blessed you with. Give him glory, honor, and thank him for it. Can we continue and, verse 12? That yes, lovely. yes. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Awesome. If you're going to have a harvest, awesome. you're going to need to recognize that it comes from God. And uh, I want you to know that in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, he said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. And it said, for it is he yes. that giveth thee power to get well. And it said that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to thy father. So it said, guess what? If God has the power. We need to believe. We need to stand uh, in faith. We could just keep on going on tonight because when I start going into them verses, I get all happy. But I want to I want to conclude uh, tonight in Second Corinthians, if you'll go with me. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And go to verse number six. The Lord wants to open his good treasures yes. to you all. But yes, we so. have to be obedient, loyal, committed, and committed. surrender. We need to surrender to him. A lot of us want the blessings, but we don't want to surrender to the blesser. But look at 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. And this is our closing scripture for Bible study tonight. It says, um, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So if you are a giver that keeps, you've been in, say, 20 years, don't get mad at me, and you keep dollaring God, you're going to re receive dollars. But if you are sowing bountifully, you might be sowing hundreds, five hundred, thousands. He said, guess what? You're going to reap bountifully. Some of us need to graduate in our giving. Now look at verse 7. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. More than just your giving. He's watching your attitude. You need to have an attitude of gratitude yes. when you give to God. Do not give to God grievously. And then verse 8, he says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have in all sufficiency, and all things may abound to every good work. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless the work of your hand. So I ask you tonight that you would recognize <laughs> God will bring forth the harvest if you will walk in obedience to him. So let's just end in prayer as Bishop closes us out. Father, we just thank you so much for this one. Yes. And for each and every heart that has gravitated, pulled, Putting a demand what they they want to not just hear it once, twice, a third time. They want to be at the point where they are full. <laughs> They're completely tapped up. We just ask, Lord God, that you would release to them, each and every one of them, by your because your grace us. Thank you for this to bless each and every sower. Yes. Give them more seed that they because as much as they can believe, give them even more and extra because you're the God that exceeds all of our expectations. Love you and thank you for this.